you notice the interior is a little bit different. We, well I, I should say, am taking the Discovery 2 out. Our trip today is going to take us into the mountains of the West Desert of Utah. Our goal? To find one of the wild horse herds that roam these vast public lands, count the size of the herd, and practice some of our photography in the process. This was also a good chance to get my old Land Rover Discovery 2 back on the trail and in the dirt. Sadly, my son woke up sick and my kids had cousins come down, so I'll be driving solo with my brother-in-law riding in my dad's JK Wrangler. We expect to cover over 100 miles in the dirt. It should be a bright, sunny, cold January day, but word is a cold front is moving in, so it may get colder. Um, you know, the story behind this is I bought the LX470 for my wife's daily driver. It has the active height control, it's big, it's got seven seats. That was gonna be her car until we had to balance one of the wheels. When we had to balance one of the wheels, there was some rust on it. It wouldn't hold the weight. Well, I'm putting on Icon 17 inch. If I'm gonna do that, I might as well put on 34 or 33 inch tires. If I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna need the lift kit. And then next thing you know, it mushroomed. And then there was a lot of unexpected required maintenance on the LX. And so I had always planned to use the Discovery. It sat. I think I put 200 miles on it from March of 2019 to May of 2021. Just 200 miles. I'm at 140,000 miles and I use this primarily as my daily driver. It's a fun daily driver absolutely horrific on gas but I get two to three miles per gallon better than the LX and I think a lot of that has to do with gearing tire size and weight when heading into the West Desert you may end up a long way from fuel sources it's always wise to top off even if it's for a day trip topping off with premium I usually run mid-grade in the disco so not too bad 20 bucks God, gas is killer for just six gallons Hinkley, Utah. Next services are the Border Inn, 83 miles away. That's why we topped off. So this is Highway 50, the loneliest highway in America. You take this highway all the way to San Francisco and there is pretty much nothing along the way. In fact, if you're heading to Tahoe or the Rubicon Trail, you plugged it into the GPS right now, your GPS would say, continue 360 miles. Your destination is on the right. Yep, no turns all the way to the Rubicon Trail. It's crazy. Now you would think the West Desert is mountainous terrain, but what it really is are these skinny mountain ranges that kind of make spines that run north to south. And in between them is a playa or a dry riverbed. And I think that's from the old Lake Bonneville days. This whole area was underwater back in prehistoric times. And so when it drained off, you've got the mountains, which used to be islands. And then you have these dry lake beds in between or playas. And you can get stuck in there. Most of the time it's dry, but we're in the winter. We'll have to be careful. We got some intel that there was quite a bit of snow last night. But looking at the mountain ranges where we're going, the one in front of us on the Drum Range and Notch Peak right there, it looks like the snowfall was only high up. So we'll be driving on the pavement for quite some time, just pretty much heading west like this to get us deep into the West Desert. Looks like we are busting off the main highway. Washboards there. You definitely feel the washboards a lot more with a solid front axle than you do an independent front suspension. That's one thing of comfort you give up when you go to a solid axle setup. But again, it's still really comfortable. We haven't aired down yet. I haven't felt the need to. Still running about 35, 36 PSI. One thing you might come across in the desert are what look like rusting metal beds with the solar panel and an antenna attached. 
These are part of a cosmic ray telescope system led by the University of Utah Astrophysics Department. They are actually collecting subatomic high-energy cosmic rays, which enter the Earth from space. This is cutting-edge research in the growing field of astroparticle physics, and the remoteness of the West Desert coupled with the arid climate make it a great place to set up this telescope network and catalog these unearthly visitors. It's kind of cool to realize that even high-technology research can find a home in the West Desert, adding another cool line item to the multi-use groups that call the West Desert public lands home. You can see how with this clay-like soil we have, you get a lot of standing water, even with minimal snowfall and rainfall. And it's no wonder that you see people, they get out in these flats, and next thing you know, they're, they're sunk. You get kind of a, a hard layer on top, and then it's really soft below, and you think you're on firm ground, and then next thing you know, boom, psh, you fall in. And so this is something we need to be aware of if the trail, we're on the county road right now, which is built up, but if we get on any of the two track side routes, this is something to be aware of. The mud can sneak up on you really quick. So the goal today is to go out and hopefully see some wild horses. And it's kind of a controversial subject because these wild horse herds, they're growing and they're getting bigger. And so with the Bureau of Land Management, the BLM, that BLM, they have the responsibility of trying to balance the resources of your public lands. So as this horse herd gets bigger, they compete with the cattle ranchers. And so they're trying to reach some balance here. And so the BLM comes out and they round up some of these horses and they take the good ones and they actually have an auction where you can go get wild Mustangs. Like, yes, you can go get them. So if you're interested in starting horse raising or whatever, and want a wild Mustang, contact the BLM. They're, they're looking for people to adopt these horses. That's the, the beautiful thing about having these public spaces. We get to just come out and enjoy wild horse herds in the wild, in the desert, in 2022. And that's actually really pretty cool. Maybe we aren't the first with this idea. It looks like we got a group of three vehicles behind us. I can only see one. Yeah, I can see the other one now. They want to go faster. I'm up to 49. This is what I mean by one of those side roads um, it's not as built up as the main county road it's still maintained very well but you can see where the ruts and the mud can sink in even though in the summer you could really take a car down this path just fine clearance isn't an issue tires are and like I said I don't know how many Toyota Corollas Honda Civics we've been out here and had to help change flat tires so you need to be aware of that but as far as off-road difficulty it's not really difficult at all except for when it gets wet as we got closer to the mountain we noticed telltale signs of the horse herds could we actually be in luck and have the horses close to the highway i think we should get rex out there to stick his finger in and tell us how fresh it is so we know And I think we found the herd early. Wow, this is way better luck than our Wapa trip where we tried to find the antelope. They're right out there. Yes, much better luck this time. Did you see him? I did. Hi, on. Did you bring your drone? Well, I was gonna let you fly and I won't get mine out if I don't need it. Oh, okay, I'll do that. Okay, that was a failure. So I got the drone out. We have this incredible wind from the northwest blowing in. It's already 23 degrees Fahrenheit. Get the drone up in the air, and the wind 
is blowing it to the southeast. And I'm trying to see on the screen the horses to film them and fight against the wind. And the whole time, DJI is screaming at me saying, you can't do this, high winds, high winds. And I can't see anything. And so after burning through a battery of trying, I drive forward so I'm flying with the wind. Then I get the drone all the heck out there, still trying to see because of the warning. And then this old iPhone I have, which I charged all last night, it did not like the cold and it just quit. It's like, I'm done, battery's low, I'm giving up the ghost. So it dies. Then I can't fly the drone back because it's blowing this way normally. So if I turn a little bit and I can't see it because it's far out there, it just blows with wind like it's on a sail. So I had to use the emergency mode and have it fight its way back to land. Finally got it landed. And then I'm gonna go out with Mike um, and my brother-in-law and film them normally. And I take this camera and I put my old school telephoto lens on, which had dust on it. I should have prepped that a little better. And I take a GoPro to kind of see what I can get with the wide angle. I get halfway out there on the GoPro talking and it gives up the ghost. It doesn't like this cold and it dies. Yes, sir. My, that wind is so strong. I got a drift. That's why I couldn't get him. I... So now I get to Mike and he forgot his telephoto. So. Hopefully we get some good footage of this. Other than that, other than this freezing cold and this um, this beanie is fantastic. Kept my ears so warm. Everything else is freezing. My face right here is numb from walking back to the car. We are not prepared for this cold of weather. We just figured we weren't planning on the wind. That's the biggest problem. Yeah, you said you did get drone footage? I did. I don't know if it's any good, but then, you know, I hovered over the horse and they moved around. It was brutal. I couldn't fight through it. My Mavic Pro couldn't fight through that crosswind. I don't think I got any of them, so that's awesome if you did. The problem is, uh, I'm right behind you. I don't know if you can see me. Uh, the problem is, I could fight through it okay, but from the sky looking down, those horses blended in. 
They were hard to see. You're absolutely right. I finally found them and then flew over them. Awesome. That makes me happy. This was a fun day. Cold. Except you were probably in a nice warm car. Flying and my nose started to run. My hands got cold. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I did get some for you. I was sitting there thinking, he didn't get him. He wants it for his channel. I'll try mine. But I had to update my firmware uh, because of the new phone. Fortunately, we had enough signal to be able to do that. Awesome. I'll let you lead. I'm ready. It was a small herd, so it seemed the BLM might have already rounded up some of the extra horses. Nevertheless, we were stoked to find them so early and hoped to return again during better weather. With the day still young, we decided to check out a few springs in the nearby mountain. No doubt the horses used these as a watering source, sharing the water with the nearby ranchers. You could see the hard work of the rancher at this particular spring. Someone had obviously come by and tirelessly broken all of the ice so the animals could utilize the watering hole. We decided to take one side road back to the main highway. It wasn't too technical, but it was rutted enough to stretch out the springs of the old Discovery too. A fitting end to a fun day. I can't wait to get back. Perhaps next time camping in the mountains and spending a few days in the desert.